Welcome to Christian Life YouTube channel. Today we talk about the power of divine providence. Divine providence quotes, God desires to show his power through your storm, but is your lack of faith keeping him from doing so? God brings storms into your life to show his strength and to gain glory from his providence. It is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and humbly to implore His protection and favor. Divine providence has played a great part in our history. I have the feeling that God has created us and brought us to our present position of power and strength for some great purpose. It is not given to us to know fully what that purpose is, but I think we may be sure of one thing, and that is that our country is intended to do all it can in cooperating with other nations to help create a peace and preserve peace in the world. It is given to defend the spiritual values the moral code against the vast forces of evil that seek to destroy them. The mystery of the universe and the meaning of God's world are shrouded in hopeless obscurity until we learn to feel that all laws suppose a lawgiver and that all working involves a divine energy. Jesus wills of his own accord to come into us and, in his own power, to deal with our needs. It is not necessary for us to constrain him by our prayers to take an interest in us. We are entirely in the care of divine providence, and it is very sweet to remain so in peace. The cross is never lacking, may it be our consolation. As every mercy is a drop obtained from the ocean of God's goodness, so every affliction is a drachum weighed out in the wisdom of God's providence. On the head of Christ are many crowns. He wears the crown of victory, he wears the crown of sovereignty, he wears the crown of creation, he wears the crown of providence. He wears the crown of grace, he wears the crown of glory, for every one of his glorified people owes his honor, happiness, and blessedness to him. The boundless stores of providence are engaged for the support of the believer. Christ is our Joseph, who has granaries full of wheat, but he does not treat us as Joseph did the Egyptians, for he opens the door of his storehouse and bids us call all the good therein our own. He has entailed upon his estate of providence a perpetual charge of a daily portion for us, and he has promised that one day we shall clearly perceive that the estate itself has been well farmed on our behalf and has always been ours. The axle of the wheels of the chariot of providence is infinite love, and gracious wisdom is the perpetual charioteer. Providence is wonderfully intricate. Ah, oh, you want always to see through providence, do you not? You never will, I assure you. You have not eyes good enough. You want to see what good that affliction was to you, you must believe it. You want to see how it can bring good to the soul, you may be enabled in a little time, but you cannot see it now, you must believe it. Honor God by trusting Him. Providence would seem to sleep unless faith and prayer awaken it. The disciples had but little faith in their master's accounts, yet that little faith awakened him in a storm, and he relieved them. Unbelief doth only discourage God from showing His power and taking our parts. The vision of the Divine Presence ever takes the form which our circumstances most require. A providence is shaping our ends, a plan is developing in our lives, a supreme and loving being is making all things work together for good. If you have money, power, and status today, it is due to the century and place in which you were born, to your talents and capacities and health, none of which you earned. In short, all your resources are in the end the gift of God. It is the duty of the saints, especially in times of straits, to reflect upon the performances of providence for them in all the states and through all the stages of their lives. In the infinite wisdom of the Lord of all the earth, each event falls with exact precision into its proper place in the unfolding of his divine plan. Nothing, however small, however strange, occurs without his ordering or without its particular fitness for its place in the working out of his purpose, and the end of all shall be the manifestation of his glory and the accumulation of his praise. There is more stuff and substance of good in the Lord's promises than the sharpest sighted saint did or can perceive, for when we have followed the promise, to find out all the truth which is in it, we meet with a cloud of unsearchable riches and are forced to leave it there. Order your soul, reduce your wants, live in charity, associate in Christian community, obey the laws, trust in providence. We hear much of a decent pride, a becoming pride, a noble pride, a laudable pride. Can that be decent, of which we ought to be ashamed? Can that be becoming, of which God has set forth the deformity? Can that be noble, which God resists and is determined to abase? Can that be laudable, which God calls abominable? Providence is a greater mystery than revelation. The state of the world is more humiliating to our reason than the doctrines of the gospel. A reflecting Christian sees more to excite his astonishment and to exercise his faith in the state of things between Temple Bar and St. Paul's than in what he reads from Genesis to Revelations. Ah, did we but rightly understand what the demerit of sin is, we would rather admire the bounty of God than complain of the straight-handedness of providence. And if we did but consider that there lies upon God no obligation of justice or gratitude to reward any of our duties, it would cure our murmurs. Genesis chapter 32 
And may the being who is supreme over all, the patron of order, the fountain of justice, and the protector in all ages of the world of virtuous liberty, continue his blessing upon this nation and its government, and give it all possible success and duration consistent with the ends of his providence. I believe that we are conforming to the divine order and the will of providence when we are doing even in different things that belong to our condition. I always consider the settlement of America with reverence and wonder as the opening of a grand scene and design in providence for the illumination of the ignorant and the emancipation of the slavish part of mankind all over the earth. It is only when men associate with the wicked with the desire and purpose of doing them good that they can rely upon the protection of God to preserve them from contamination. Inordinate desires commonly produce irregular endeavors. If our wishes be not kept in submission to God's providence, our pursuits will scarcely be kept under the restraints of his precepts. Nothing that happens in the world happens by chance. God is a God of order. Everything is arranged upon definite principles and never at random. The world, even the religious world, is governed by law. Character is governed by law. Happiness is governed by law. The Christian experiences are governed by law. Sometimes God makes use of instruments for good to his people, who design nothing but evil and mischief to them. Thus Joseph's brethren were instrumental to his advancement in that very thing in which they designed his ruin Genesis chapter 50. God will not lightly or easily lose his people. He has provided well for us, blood to wash us in, a priest to pray for us, that we may be made to persevere, and, in case we foully fall, an advocate to plead our cause. By the all-powerful dispensations of providence I have been protected beyond all human probability or expectation. For I had four bullets through my coat, and two horses shot under me yet escaped unhurt, although death was leveling my companions on every side of me. Whatsoever is good for God's children they shall have it, for all is theirs to help them towards heaven, therefore if poverty be good they shall have it. If disgrace or crosses be good they shall have them, for all is ours to promote our greatest prosperity. God, who is liberal in all his other gifts, shows us, by the wise economy of his providence, how circumspect we ought to be in the management of our time, for he never gives us two moments together. To the dim and bewildered vision of humanity, God's care is more evident in some instances than in others, and upon such instances men seize and call them providences. It is well that they can, but it would be gloriously better if they could believe that the whole matter is one grand providence. God often lays the sum of his amazing providences in very dismal afflictions, as the limner first puts on the dusky colors, on which he intends to draw the portraiture of some illustrious beauty. How bade your faith seek but the black side of providence, yet it hath a better side, and God shall let you see it. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Hence I infer that losses, disappointments, ill tongues, loss of friends, houses, or country are God's workmen, set on work to work out good to you out of everything that befalleth you. How often has providence convinced its observers, upon a sober recollection of the events of their lives, that if the Lord had left them to their own counsels they had as often been their own tormentors, if not executioners. They foresaw that the concession of a providence would impose an eternal yoke upon their necks, by making them accountable for all they did to a higher tribunal, so that they must necessarily pass the time of their sojourning here in fear, while all their thoughts, words, and ways were strictly noted and recorded, for the purpose of an account by an all-seeing and righteous God. They therefore labored to persuade themselves that what they had no mind for did not exist. I never was without some religious principles. I never doubted, for instance, the existence of the deity, that he made the world and governed it by his providence, that the most acceptable service of God was the doing good to man, that our souls are immortal, and that all crime will be punished and virtue rewarded either here or hereafter. We begin life with the natural, next we come into the spiritual. But then, when we have truly received the kingdom of God and his righteousness, the natural is added to the spiritual, and we are able to receive the gifts of his providence and the blessings of life without becoming centered in them or allowing them to separate us from him. To know God is the master and bestower of all good things, who invites us to request them of him, and still not go to him and ask of him. This would be of as little profit as for a man to neglect a treasure buried and hidden in the earth after it had been pointed out to him. The mystery of the universe and the meaning of God's world are shrouded in hopeless obscurity until we learn to feel that all laws suppose a lawgiver and that all working involves a divine energy. Chosen soul, how will you bring this about? What steps will you take to reach the high level to which God is calling you? The means of holiness and salvation are known to everybody since they are found in the gospel. The masters of the spiritual life have explained them, the saints have practiced them. These means are sincere humility, unceasing prayer, complete self-denial, abandonment to divine providence, and obedience to the will of God. Divine providence is never wanting in things undertaken at its command. Even though the whole world should rise up and destroy us, nothing could happen but what is pleasing to God. 
The less there is of man in affairs, the more there is of God. Humanity must accept that the food, the raw materials, the energy, the scientific knowledge and so on, belongs to everybody, that it is given by divine providence for all peoples, the rich nations and what are called the developing nations. No one has the right to corner the goods of the world as is done today, whether that be oil or food or any of the things that we think are so important. You are equipped with strong bodies and educated minds. Add to these an unshakable faith in a divine providence and you have the tools by which you may build a successful life. Make each day your masterpiece and live so nobly that you may witness honestly each day. Whatever came to your hands this day, you did it to the best of your ability. Divine providence is connected with divine intellectual influence, and the same beings which are benefited by the latter so as to become intellectual, and to comprehend things comprehensible to rational beings, are also under the control of divine providence, which examines all their deeds with a view of rewarding or punishing them. Dot 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 the method of which our mind is incapable of understanding. The mystery of God's providence is a most sublime consideration. It is easy to let our reason run away with itself. It is at a loss when it attempts to search into the eternal decrees of election or the entangled mazes and labyrinths in which the divine providence walks. This knowledge is too wonderful for us. Man can be very confident that God exercises the most accurate providence over him in his affairs. Nothing comes to pass without our Heavenly Father. No evil comes to pass without his permissive providence, and no good without his ordaining providence to his own ends. Surely it is a matter of joy that your faith in Jesus has been preserved. The comforter that should relieve you is not far from you. But as you are a Christian, in the name of that Savior, who was filled with bitterness and made drooken with wormwood, I conjure you to have recourse in frequent prayer to his God and your God, the God of mercies, and Father of all comfort. Your poor father is, I hope, almost senseless of the calamity, the unconscious instrument of divine providence knows it not, and your mother is in heaven. Thank you so much for watching Christian Life YouTube channel make sure you subscribe for more quality content.